I'm putting a new clutch in the dump truck today and I thought I'd make a video. And the astute viewer might notice there's no clutch up there. I didn't film removing the transmission whatsoever. I've got a whole series on that. If you want to see that, I'll link that in the description. Also in the description, I will link replacing the pilot bearing. I have not done that yet, but I'm going to do that as a separate video. Just kind of keep this one short and more about the clutch. It's got an Eaton Fuller self-adjusting solo clutch. Let's drag it out from under the truck and look at it a little bit closer. Now this side right here would go against the flywheel. This is the first clutch disc. It's got three friction pads. And this happens to be a two disc clutch. So it has an intermediate plate. And then below that is a, is a second clutch disc with three more pads. And you can see they're worn. The rivets are about coming through on those. The surface of the intermediate plate here and the uh, pressure plate here both feel pretty good. The flywheel doesn't feel bad either, so I'm not going to bother resurfacing it. Now there are some special things you have to do before you remove this if you're going to reuse the same clutch. There are bolts you insert in these four holes around the perimeter and um, there's a process. I'll go into that more in detail later. For now I'm just going to give you a quick look over this one. I bought a reman clutch so I've got to return this when I pick up the new one. You'll see here on the side it's got an indicator of how much clutch life you've got left. New is over here and replaces right here. And this little tab indicates where you're at in your wear cycle. The solo clutch has two ramps in it that are stacked opposite of one another. And there's a big spring that pulls the top um, ramp this way. This little finger is connected to that ramp. So the more that the clutch wears, the farther the ramp goes this way to adjust itself and the closer you get to being out of spec. The reason I pulled it is because it's hanging up when I go to shift. It's super hard to get it shifted into first and reverse, which is probably what caused the problem in the initial transmission video if you've seen that one. And if you inspect in here, you can see that this throw out bearing has been rubbing on the input shaft. That alone is enough to cause the problem, but also the uh, pilot bearing up inside the flywheel I mean, I can hardly get the thing to turn over. It is pretty well seized up. Like I said, we'll go into more in depth in that in a separate video. But those two things are causing the input shaft to continue to spin, even though the clutch is depressed. Meaning, I'm trying to put it in first and reverse, which typically you can only get in when you're completely stopped, while the transmission's still spinning over. And it's just, it's not having it. Also, it makes the PTO nearly impossible to engage, which makes having a dump bed pretty useless when you can't engage the PTO to dump it. And here's the new clutch. Let me unbox it and I'm going to walk you through how I plan on installing it. So first, this is my alignment tool. This is actually made to go on a clutch jack. So this part here would go into the jack and support all the clutch components and you could just jack it up and slide it right into the pilot bearing and then bolt the clutch down. I don't have that, so we're just going to use this as an alignment tool. You can see the splines there that will keep both of the clutch discs perfectly aligned with one another and keep it centered on the pilot bearing here. You don't want to use this to try and support the weight of the clutch because that will damage the pilot bearing. This box says 53 pounds, this one says 60. Some simple math tells me that's 113 pounds. That's one heavy clutch and you definitely don't want that hanging on this tiny nub. You're going to damage your bearing. And also, it's probably just going to fall out. We've got clutch plates in this one. You want to make sure your hands are nice and clean. You don't want to be getting oil on any of these surfaces. And honestly, I'm just also not going to be touching the friction surfaces. They're all going to be labeled, such as this, front disc, flywheel side. This will be the very first one we put in. This side will face the flywheel. And right behind that is going to go the intermediate plate, which also should be labeled. This one's actually cast right into the housing. Boy, that's heavy. So it'll go just like that right on top of the first clutch plate. We've got a little note here about these pins. They must be flush with the casting when you install them. I'm going to remove that sticker and then brake clean this whole surface. I want everything nice and clean when it goes back together. And the last thing in this first box will be the second clutch plate. And it says rear disc pressure plate side. That's it for the first box. And then this next box is going to be the pressure plate assembly. Stay open already. That's gonna be heavy. 
Holy cow. So here is the pressure plate that will go against the second clutch disc. The transmission will be on this side. So the plan is to take this input shaft, slide it through both of these clutch discs, get everything lined up. At that point, we will take the very tip of it, slide it into the new input bearing, I'm sorry, the new pilot bearing. That will get everything centered on the flywheel. At the same time, I'm gonna have in two of the bolt holes that the clutch bolts to the flywheel with, I have two alignment studs that I made. They're just 3 8 by 24, I think, or 16. I don't know, they're 3 8 bolts. I'll have two alignment studs that I can just slide um, this intermediate plate on. That will support the weight while I come over here, grab the pressure plate, slide the pressure plate over the shaft and onto the alignment studs that I already mentioned. At that point, I can go ahead and start getting some of the bolts threaded in the clutch housing, take those alignment studs out, put bolts in those holes, and start torquing everything down. That's the plan. Let's see if it works. But first, sticker removal and brake clean on everything. I should also mention, you need to inspect your flywheel. If it's warped, if it's discolored, if it's got grooves in it, you need a new one, or you at least need it resurfaced. Mine looks pretty good. Honestly, the clutch was wearing very nice and even. I'm not gonna mess with it. it. Looks fine as far as I'm concerned. But while you're this far into it, you need to inspect that flywheel. If there's something wrong with that flywheel, it's gonna greatly reduce the life of your new clutch. I've got both clutch discs and the intermediate plate here. I'm gonna see if I can get them on the transmission. Whew. This is going to be hard. Really starting to think maybe I should have made this fit on a floor jack. I chose a bad hole. Now here's the fun part. Not every one of these bolt holes is used. One, two, one, two. I gotta orient the clutch in such a way that I can get it on there. So we've got two there, two and two. Two, I'm gonna move it up here. See what that gets me. I don't know, for some reason I couldn't get to line up down there. I don't know why. I'm just moving it. it makes me happy. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Except it won't go through the stupid tab there. Woo! Okay, now I just gotta get it in the pilot bearing, which, see how it's freely spinning? Perfect. That is in. This here is actually a really good example. When you when you depress the clutch pedal, the pressure plate will come back and release from the discs, allowing the engine to keep spinning, which obviously I can't do that. But you can see, I can spin the clutch disc right now and the engine's not turning over. This is the exact same as your input shaft and your transmission. This can move independently from the um, engine, but as soon as you depress, as soon as you let go of the clutch, it slams these plates down tight and locks everything right together, solid. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That feels like it's all on there good. On those two alignment, there's a little bit of weeble wobble here, but not much. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the pressure plate, get it on here too. Then I'll start torquing the bolts around in a circle. And um, while I'm doing, I'll probably kind of jiggle this a little bit just to make sure it stays centered. And, and hopefully, all of this is still here when I come back with the pressure plate. Don't go anywhere. And I'm back with the pressure plate. I got all the stickers removed that matter. These ones don't make a difference. The way I know that is because A, it's not anywhere the friction material is going to rub. B, this one's actually underneath the clutch button. If it really had to come off, I don't think they would put it underneath the clutch button. That's just my thoughts. If you're concerned about it, get it out of there, but I'm not. I think it'll be just fine. 
So, let's see, two big holes, two little holes, two big holes, one little hole. Big hole, little hole. Big, big, little, little. Where's the little, little? I don't know. Big, big, little. Big, big, little. Big, big, little. Big, big, little. Big, big, okay, it's a pattern, so it'll be fine. Here we go. Dowel, perfect. It's on the dowels. Slide that in. Now, is that correct? That's the question. I don't know. It's got these other little holes here. And I believe I'm supposed to be able to partially see a pin through there, which I cannot see. Hmm. Maybe it needs to come off and rotate a revolution. Slide it back off there. Spin it around and see what I get. Okay, here we go. And hopefully everything else will stay in place, because I need it to. Alright, we're past the pins. Two alignment dowels. And yet still, I don't see anything through those other holes. In the picture, it showed something inside these little holes, and I can't see anything in there. Don't you just love it when the instructions point out a step like that, and it just does not make sense to you? There is four sets of two bolts. But as far as I can tell, they are evenly spaced down there. I'm going to look at the instruction sheet again quick, just to make sure. Smack your head on the steps when you're getting under the dump truck. That really hurts. Okay. Got the torque wrench. Got my ratchet. Let's start running some of these down. Oh yeah, those are totally fine. Alright, I'm going to steal the light again. I can't see down here, guys. I'm just going to go in a crisscross pattern and try and do this evenly. You don't want to just start going in a circle and go around and tighten them that way. You want to pull it down as evenly as possible. And now that I've got some pressure on it, I'm going to go ahead and pull these guide pins out. And yep, I'm going to have to go get some pliers to get those out of there. Darn it. I've got lucky. If I'm lucky, I've got some in the cab of the truck here. Am I lucky? No. No, I'm not lucky. I'll be back again. Move these studs. These guide studs were a lifesaver. I, I could have never done this without these studs. The alignment tool here just aligned everything. These two studs held the weight of all the components. Plus, you can see how far they stick out. It really made a huge difference. If you're doing this, make yourself some guide studs. I think these were four and a half inch bolts. All right, and the torque spec on these was 30 to 35 foot pounds. So obviously I chose the correct spec and I put it at 35. Do you guys do that too? Whenever I have a range, I always pick the top number. Unless it's old and aluminum, and then I get nervous and I kind of kind of go somewhere in the middle. But that says 35. Just double checking myself, which is super convenient here in the dark. I'm just going to start at the bottom and once again crisscross. Torque specs always surprise me. You expect something like this on a dump truck with a Caterpillar C7 to have, you know, all these big, huge torque specs, and the clutch is 30 to 35 foot-pounds. Granted, there are eight bolts, but still, 30 to 35 foot-pounds is, I mean, that's nothing. 
should just be two more and then I will go around in a circle once again just to verify that I did indeed torque all eight of them. It's installed. Now that the eight perimeter bolts are in, I just have to remove the four shipping bolts. One, two, three, and four. If you are removing your clutch and you're going to reuse it, you're just taking it off for some reason, you're going to put it back on, you need to put these bolts back in. That's the special procedure I was talking about earlier, but I didn't care because I was trashing the clutch. If you're going to be reusing this clutch and you're just taking it off temporarily, if you just unbolt it, this is your indicator gauge of new to replace. It's going to go whoop down to replace. The second you unbolt it, it's going to adjust all the way and you have to go through a resetting procedure. But if you install the four essentially caging bolts that come in it when it's shipped, you can just take it off and put it back on later. No big deal. Take the bolts out when it's done. So now that it's bolted down to the flywheel, I take out these four bolts, pull out the alignment tool, and the clutch is installed. There's one more procedure we got to do after it's all together. I'll bring you back for that when I get there. Now hopefully, this clutch tool will slide right back out at me. Look at that. Boom. Clutch disc should be perfectly aligned with the pilot bearing and hopefully the transmission slides in as easy as this came out. It's the next day. You can see I got the transmission back in. There's two steps left to do on this clutch install. I forgot to show you guys one step. If you remember there was those four pins in the back of the clutch that I was concerned about seeing through the other holes the bolts didn't go through. You're supposed to drive them in with a quarter inch punch. Sorry I forgot to film that step. It's been done. The next thing we gotta do is grease the throw out or release bearing. Scoot along the bottom of the train here, you'll come up to the flywheel housing, or the bell housing, and there's an access hole in the bottom, and up inside, you can see a grease zerk. That is right on the bottom of the throwout bearing, and once I start to see grease coming out over here, I'll know I've got enough. I mean, I want just a little bit of grease coming out, because if you've got too much in there, it's going to come out both sides and get on the pressure plate, and... Ah, I don't like this step. I don't like greasing these bearings. They need it. They need grease. Especially this, it's a dump truck, lives in dusty conditions, it needs it. So I'm going to get up in there with the grease gun, shoot some grease in there, and then we've got to adjust the clutch pedal, which attaches right there, through that crank arm, hits another rod, goes up, and the adjustment's up there somewhere, up under the hood. I'll show you that step when we get there. Alright, let's see if I can show you guys this. I'm going to go up in here with the grease gun. There we go. Got it clipped on there. Now this is a lock and loop fitting. I've got a whole video about these. One of my favorite things I've ever bought is this lock and lube. Makes greasing so much more convenient. Now, I'm going to use Lucas Red and Tacky for one very important reason. And that is because it's what's in my grease gun. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I lied. We're not going to go until I see grease coming out. I gave it six pumps. I don't see any grease coming out yet, but I don't want to do any more. I might run it for a while and double check this and we'll see if the grease has worked its way out. I don't know if you can see that. There's just the slightest red tint on the very bottom of that shaft. I can see it's just starting to come out of there. So I think that six pumps was perfect. I'm happy with that. Now the very last step in this clutch installation is to adjust the clutch or more correctly the clutch linkage. Uh, the clutch is self-adjusting but you do have to adjust the linkage that goes between the pedal and the uh, the crank arm on the side of the transmission. To do this it's said to fully depress the clutch four to five times. One, two, three, four, five. And you should have one to one and a half inches of free play meaning you can depress the pedal an inch to an inch and a half before it does anything. Well it does something right away. There's absolutely no free play. And the problem with that is, is the clutch is not fully engaging, which is going to allow the clutch to slip a little bit. That's no bueno. That's going to cause premature wear on your clutch. So what we're going to do is go under the hood. I'm going to adjust the linkage there until we have an inch to an inch and a half of free play here. And this right here is where that adjustment is made. Actually, first I'm going to loosen the adjusting nut. Holy cow, it's tight. Oh my goodness. I know as soon as it breaks loose, I'm going to slam my fingers into the valve cover and bust my knuckles. So let's see here, we need to lengthen this rod and that will give us more free play in the pedal. Alright, now I need to slide the arm off of that bolt. 
gonna go six turns. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now let's stick that back on there. I'm gonna depress the pedal and see how that feels. It's about just right there. There's not much. I've got a little, but not much free play. So let's go some more. Oh, that was three or four more turns. Well, that's still not enough. I guess I'm just really going to unadjust this thing and see where that gets me. Now out of curiosity, I'm just unthreading this to see how long it is. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. I'm going to tighten this down. Then I'll move you guys so you can see the clutch pedal again. Fully released, the pedal is at 7 inches, depressed, it's just past 6. Spec is an inch to an inch and a half, that is what we need. There's the free play to ensure our clutch is fully released. That's the last step. Clutch is installed, it's adjusted, fire up the truck, take it for a test drive.